Another gospel will come and say, God loves everybody. Right. You understand that? Another gospel will say, everybody can repent and be accepted of God. Right. That's not what the Bible says. Right. John chapter 4 and verse 1. So you, you said something interesting about the image, right? You said that, you said that uh, that's the image uh, uh, from their point of view. Like it might have some truth in it, right? All right, so watch, watch what the Bible says. You believe in the Bible. All right, watch. The book of 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1. Read out. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Do what? Believe not every spirit, uh -huh. but try the spirit. So how do we try the spirit? I, I, I would assume, you know, from my own personal experiences through, you know, your own prayer and fasting and your own relationship with Christ, you know, your own relationship. So we, in order for us to try the Spirit, we have to try the Spirit by the Spirit. That's right. You understand that? Right. So which means we're going to have to understand and find out what the Spirit is according to the Bible. Because one thing our people don't understand and realize is that the Bible is its own glossary. All right. You see what I'm saying? Like anytime you're dealing with a subject in school, right? It, it, it has certain words that, that may mean certain things generally, but pertaining to that, that specific subject, it has a different meaning, right? And you can go to the glossary to find out that meaning, right? So the Bible, in, in a similar way, it's the same thing. You understand? Hold that. Give me uh, first, first Peter chapter 2, 1 Peter 2. Chapter 1 and verse 20. Bring it out. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 20. The Bible Sorry. says the second Peter chapter 1 and verse 20. Thank you. You got that? Read. The book of Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 20. Knowing this first. It says knowing this first. Right? You follow? Go ahead. That no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. What does that mean? So, so, so nobody can pick this book up and say, well, and start reading and say, well, this is how I understand it to me, right? That's what it said, right? Meaning what? You can go to the, to the Bible to find out what it's talking about. Right. You understand that? So we don't have to uh, guess. We don't have to throw our own personal opinion, right? We can go straight to the scriptures. But so go back to first John verse four, chapter four, read first John chapter four, verse one, beloved. Believe not every spirit. So the Bible says, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit. What is the spirit? Give me uh, John chapter 6 and verse 63. I'm asking you, and I'm asking you, what is the spirit? Well, you're talking about the Holy Trinity. You got God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The spirit is, is, is that line of, I don't know if you want to say communication or whatever it is between flesh and, and God and man. And now, is that in the Bible? The Trinity is in the Bible? I wouldn't say it comes out and says, hey, this is the Trinity. But so where do we get that understanding of the Trinity from? Uh, man, I wish I knew my scriptures like y'all. It's all good, brother. That's what we're here for, man. We're here to, we're here to uh, dialogue with our people and, and, and show them what the Bible says. You know what I'm saying? Versus what we believe and what, what we was taught. You understand? It also talks about, I think it's in Ecclesiastes, it talks about the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Cannot be defined by man either, and that's you know one of the gifts are it talks about discernment and wisdom. You know, discernment cannot. The Bible doesn't really define what discernment is, but that is defined in relationship with the Spirit. Okay, watch this. Read the Book of John, chapter six, verse sixty-three. Bring it out. So you said the Bible doesn't define what the Spirit is or discernment. No, I said what discernment. So what is the Spirit? <laughs> the Spirit is it's a form of God. It's a form of God. So now we're going to go to the Bible and find out what the spirit is. Because we also are spirit man too. That's part of us. We have a spirit. Yeah, that's true. Go ahead. John chapter 6 verse 63. Bring it out. It is the spirit that quickeneth. It is what? It is the spirit that quickeneth. You understand what that's saying? I guess strengthen. No, quickeneth means to change. Right. right. Or transform. Okay. Okay, read it again. It is the spirit that quickeneth. So it's the spirit, the Lord's spirit, that changes people. Go ahead. The flesh profiteth nothing. Flesh referring to sin, 
it profits us nothing because the wages of sin is death. Go ahead. The words that I speak unto you. The what? The words that I speak unto you. He spoke us to spoke unto us through this Bible. The words of this Bible were correct. Correct, my brother, brother Lazarus. Right? You hear that? The words that he speak unto us what? They are spirit. What are they? They are spirit. The Bible is, is its own glossary, brother. You see what I'm saying? The Bible is its own glossary. Read on. And they are life. And they are life. So go back to 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1. So now the Bible says, says what? 1 John chapter 4 verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Believe not every spirit. Why? Because man going to come with their own opinion, their own philosophy. Right, right. You understand that? So the Bible is giving us warning to say, listen, don't believe every spirit. You're right. We all got spirits in us. But what spirit are you rolling in? Are you rolling in the spirit of the Lord? Are you rolling in the spirit of this world? All right. You understand that? Go ahead. But try the spirit. So we try the spirit how? By the spirit. Right. Do you have the fruits of the spirit? You understand that? Come on. Whether they be of God, whether they be of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. So now this is why you have to try the spirit, because you got many false prophets going out in the world speaking their own vain things. And, and watch this. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come. And the flesh is of God. So every spirit that confessed that Christ come in the flesh, meaning what? He must have what? A physical body. And, and that body looks like what? The, the body looks like the people on the earth, right? What people? What people? What, who's us? Because if he came in the flesh, right? There's many di there's different nationalities, correct? So if he came in the flesh and he looked like one of us, then he had to look like, or he had to be a part of a certain nationality. Yeah. Correct? So read that part John chapter 4, verse 2. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. So now, go ahead. What's your question? Okay, so what I'm saying is, what are we talking about? If we had a nationality in that, then that would make that, that nationality, I'm assuming, uh, uh, a higher stature than any other. There would be the chosen if we were born from that nationality. We're going to see if the Bible agrees with that or not. We're going to see. But, but, but one thing I wanted to show you is that the Bible says, every spirit that confesses not... Jesus Christ come in the flesh, and if he come in the flesh, he had to look like a, uh, he had to look like a a nationality. You understand that? Anybody else walking around looking like this nationality and that nationality and another nationality? Huh? Well, I, I don't really see where the nationality really matters. No, flesh, flesh, brother, flesh. You gotta you gotta flesh the flesh. In your flesh, what people do you look like? In my flesh. In your flesh. You look like a black person, which means you will belong to the so-called black race, correct? Okay, so now look at that, look at that brother on the bike. What what flesh did he come in? He looks Caucasian, right? So th that's what I'm talking about. You understand that? So the Bible says every spirit that confesseth not that Christ has come in the flesh, right? Meaning whatever flesh he came in, we supposed to go by that. You understand that? So now, that image over there, what you said, they, they, that's their opinion, right? But is that what the Bible says? It, right, exactly. So is it really their opinion, or are they trying to force that on people? I, I believe it's a force. Okay, so now watch this. But check this out. You though. believe it's a force. So now watch but, this. But, but, but me, as a believer, none of this matters. It wouldn't okay, watch this. It watch wouldn't this. My remember, mind. remember every... Black. Hold on. Hold on, every spirit that confesses that he came in the flesh. If you, if you confess that he came in the flesh, then you must conf confess what flesh he came in. Right. right. I agree that he came in in black flesh, but I'm saying that. Right. Okay, now watch this. Read on. Chapter 4, verse 3. 
and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh is not of God. That spirit is not of God. Right. So if if, it, if, the, if they say he came in a, in a form of a flesh that's not in the Bible, what is that spirit? Read on. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. You see that? You see that? You're essentially saying that the Bible, well, you're, the Bible is saying, not you. All praises. Yeah, the Bible is saying that, it, that, the, that if anybody is acknowledging him that he came in a different color other than what it is. Well, other than what the Bible says he came. Then he's the Antichrist. Then he's the Antichrist. Yes, right. You understand that, brother? I, I agree with that. Uh, okay, so you agree with that. So now you know why they push that. And it's in the Bible. You feel me? It's in a, give me uh, 1 John chapter well, 5 and verse 10. I was just saying, even though they push it, Having a spiritual relationship with God wouldn't allow that to have control over me because I know that's. Oh, God. but it would, and I'm gonna show you why. And I'm gonna show you why, okay? Because remember, it said, "Believe not every spirit." There's a reason he said, "Don't believe every spirit, Perfect. but try the spirit." You understand that? Because behind the spirit, you gotta understand if it's the of the of God of the Most High, then that spirit is gonna push what God wants. No. And if it's not, then it's gonna push something different. You understand that? Why? But but you got to know the spirit first, yeah, right. That's true. which is the word of God. So you got to study. Read on. First John. You want me to okay. five. First John chapter five verse ten. He that believeth on the Son of God, you, he that believes on the Son of God, hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God, hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God. Gave of his son. So God already gave a record of his son in the Bible. You understand that? And if you believe in him, then you're gonna you going if you believe what the Bible says about Christ, then you have the witness in you. But if you come with a different understanding that's in the Bible, you don't believe. Without discernment, you can't break all that down, so it allows your own mind to intervene for interpretation. So in order for you to gain and start discernment. You got to read and study. Exactly, yeah, brother. Right. That way you'll be able to say, believe not every spirit, but believe the word. The word you understand that? In the word it says, uh, study and show yourself approved. Yes, it does. So that study to show yourself approved. Because why? Give me a second uh, Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 4. A second, all we're doing is trying to bring our people to truth, to the truth. Because we've been lied to for so many years and we don't even understand it. You understand that? And nobody is trying to teach them the truth. So we, what we're trying to do is to do what God says. You understand? We're trying to bring the truth to our people so they understand the Bible the way it was supposed to be understood. All right? Now read what you got. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Now first give me John chapter 8 and verse 32. I know, I know. What time is it? 57. Ooh, damn. Hurry up. Give me that. Give me that. I, I appreciate you, brother, for saying and learning something here and de and dealing patiently with me and then and listening to what the what the scriptures say. All praises. Read what you got. Hurry up. John chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So once we not begin to know the truth, it begins to liberate our minds. Because our minds being lied to and being in sin, it's in captivity. You understand that? And, and, and once our minds are in captivity, now our body and our nation is in captivity. You understand that? So now give me uh, John. I mean, give me, go back to 2 Corinthians. Read. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 4. For if he that cometh uh -huh. preacheth another Jesus. Did they not preach another Jesus? Now this is a warning, brother. You understand? Come on. Who? We have not preached. The prophets and apostles didn't preach that Jesus. Come on. Or if you receive another spirit. And what comes with that Jesus? Another spirit, brother. Another doctrine. You understand that? And that's why I told you. It, that's why I told you. It does matter that they come with a different spirit because a different doctrine behind it comes, which is the doctrine of the Antichrist. You understand that, brother? And this is what our people got to understand and come up out of and got to learn from. Read on. Or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted. That's why it says, or another gospel. Because it's not the gospel of the Bible. It's not the good news of the Bible. The good news of the Bible says that God only came for his chosen people, yeah. not all nations that he created. Right. You understand that? That's what the Bible says. But the other gospel, another gospel will come and say, God loves everybody. Right. You understand that? Another gospel will say, everybody can repent and be accepted of God. Right. 
That's not what the Bible said. That's not what the Bible said. So we're teaching the blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Matthew 15, 24. Go ahead. I think the, I think the, the hard part for that to understand is that if you're not those people, but you love God, it feels like it's a waste of your time. Wow. You said something deep, brother. You said if it's not for your people, then it's a waste of your time. Freedom. Guess what? We trying to bring that understanding to our people, but it's a hard thing to swallow. It's a hard thing to swallow, but the truth sometimes hurt, and our people don't like the truth. Isaiah, Isaiah 30. Right. He came for the, you know, he sent his son for the sins of the world. He didn't say for the sins of the chosen people. Wait a minute. Okay, so now let's get some understanding. He said he came for the sins of the world, right? Okay, so now, what world was he talking about? Did you know that there's, remember, the Bible is its own glossary. Right, right. Did you know that there's multiple definitions of world? You got the sports world. Right, Does the sports world have anything to do with the, uh, the uh, sea world? See, <laughs> huh? Huh? So, because the reason why I gave that instance, because one definition that our people fail to look at, yeah, world means the earth. What and everything in it. The Bible define as world. We're going to get it. Isaiah 45 and 17. Right. We're going to get it. And, and there's multiple instances. After this, I got to go. Okay. I'll, and then give me uh, John 18 and 20. All right. Read. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 17. Read it up. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. Who shall be saved? But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. Clear. It didn't say all nations. Go ahead. With an everlasting salvation. An everlasting forever. Read on. So, so can you become an Israelite then? Can you, uh, can you become a Chinese? Go. If you engulf yourself in the culture and learn all the, the, the things that it says. So let me ask you. So let me ask you. All the people that's come to America and engulf themselves in the, in the culture of America, Reagan, does that go. change their race? In my mind, it would make them American and then attach to whatever culture they came from. So, does it change their race? No, it doesn't. It oh, okay, it doesn't. This Bible is about a race of people. Who is that race of people? The Israelites. No, it is not. And I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But, but in, your, in your race, there's going to be certain descript descriptions that are attached to your race. You understand that? Like, okay, I'm going to go with the Chinese again. I'm going to go with the chinky eyes. We know the Chinese, the Japanese, the Korean, they got chinky eyes. That pertains to their race. You understand that, brother? Well, that, that's a biological attribute. That's not race. That pertains to their race, brother. That's what you feel, fell in the real life. For the majority. Culture has no physical look. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Because you can take a white boy and put him in a black neighborhood. That's, that's okay. That's okay. That doesn't mean, that, that culture and race are two different things. They're two different things. So yes, uh, when you take on another culture, it doesn't make you that nationality. That's what, that's what I'm pr proving to you. When you talk about race, it doesn't have a physical look. It does. It does. Look up the definition of race. Go ahead. Race. A race is a grouping of humans, a grouping of humans okay. based on sh um, shared physical, shared what, or social, no, a shared what, shared physical, physical or, brother. No, it said physical. Or, Wait a no. minute, you gotta deal with or, that. You gotta deal I'm with that. I'm gonna let him finish, but you gotta accept that physical I, I, part. So I, now I, you I, you agree I, you were wrong? Okay, I was wrong. Okay, go ahead. Shared physical or social quality, or go ahead into category categories generally viewed as distinct by society so now so now we just dealt with it brother it race it does come with a certain physical description or at or actual read isaiah chapter 45 verse 17 it up. but israel shall be saved in the lord so we're talking about salvation is it for everybody it says israel read on with the everlasting hold on hold on Hold on, hold on. We're going to find out if the Bible says that or not. Read on. With an everlasting salvation, ye shall not be ashamed, nor confounded. World, what? World without end. He called, he called Israel a world without end. Right. John 18 and 20. He called Israel a world without end. Let's get some more understanding on the word world. Read on. 
John chapter 18, verse 20. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. He did what? I spake openly to the world. Let me finish this and I'm going to let you say what you got to say. But you got to listen. He's, Jesus said he spake openly to the world. What world? Let's see. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple whether the Jews always resort. That's the world he was dealing with. What? Where the Jews resort. The Jews were in the temple. The Jews were in the synagogue. Not the other nations. The other nations weren't allowed in the temple. You understand that? So what, who was the world Christ was talking about? The Israelites. Thank you. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.